This is whiskey, Johnny Walker's Scotch whiskey. From this place and these people, I, Scotch makers, creating the bold and complex flavor of Johnny Walker Black Label. Step right up. Whiskey Cast. Brought to you by Redbreast. The definitive single pot still Irish whiskey. Those in the know, no red breast. It's Derby Day and the drinks are flowing. But this isn't Kentucky. It's Camden, New Jersey, just across the Delaware River from Philadelphia at Cooper River Distillers. It's a malt whiskey. James Yoakum opened the craft distillery four years ago, started off with Petty's Island Rum, then added Silver Fox and Cooper River Rise, along with single malts and a bourbon, while the tasting room became a popular spot on weekends. So you've got a crowded tasting room, your products sell as fast as you can get them to retailers. You might think Cooper River Distillers would be a success story among craft distillers. The thing is, you'd be wrong. This is actually a going out of business party. This was an experimental project from the beginning. Uh, we knew that we needed to be bigger than this long term. And I said, hey, let's, let's start small, get something going, see how long it lasts, and hopefully grow bigger. We weren't able to grow bigger, and so, uh, you know, at some point had to say, hey, it's time to pull the plug. And if you're going to go out, you might as well go out in style. The winner! The distillery's annual Kentucky Derby party has always been a hit, even if they couldn't always get the projector to work. Muddy track. He's a mutter. His mutter was a mutter. But the small still James Yoakum started out with four years ago always worked. The problem? No matter how much whiskey and rum it produced, demand always exceeded supplies. And the last thing Yoakum wanted to do was buy bulk whiskey and rum to bottle under his labels. So, with a young family to think of, he made the decision earlier this year to close the doors for good on Derby Day. We could have probably shifted to being more of a tasting room focused operation. That was an option. Um, that is not what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a production distillery and make booze and get it out and make it better and better and more and more of it over time. And um, we just weren't able to grow that organically. And the cost of doing that was, was more than we could pull together um, before I kind of had to, had to just pick a, pick a date and say, if it's not done by then, here we go. Here we are. <laughs> Today's the day. Today's the day. We figured we'd make a party out of it. Neighbors and friends showed up to get one last bottle, commiserate, and reflect. Actually, this place opening up kind of turned me on to the idea of uh, like micro distilling. And it was really one of the first places I heard of this. And uh, it opened up a door for me. I, I got into a little bit of whiskey, bourbon, and uh, especially the Petty's Island uh, uh, Driftwood Dream Rum and drinking some uh, Dark and Stormies. Definitely. So, Definitely. expanded my horizons. We're I'm gonna, really sad to see them go. I'm going to miss it. shame. Camden was once a city that made things. The old garage that's home to the distillery was once where car stereos from the nearby RCA plant were installed. And this distillery was one of the few places left where made in Camden meant something. The biggest time we had like things being made here was back when Campbell was here, you know, before like a, big, a lot of the big companies left. So it was, it was great to have, you know, some form of commerce and like production back in Camden. This is the first uh, distillery of its kind here, post uh, prohibition and all that. So it was a real, a real novelty. And it's interesting. So like, you got Philly, you got New York, you got your big cities. So it's interesting to have a place that's near Philadelphia that had a thing that was its own, you know, you got um, Harry's Island Rum, the different brands, what have you. And it was a really interesting creative space. And I feel like they did a really great thing here. Chris Williams is one of the many part-timers who worked behind the bar on weekends. It's great to have a place where everybody's like um, invested in something that's here, you know, because like you can have a group of people from Camden to go get a drink in Philly, but that's not home, you know, yeah. You gonna miss this place? 
I already do. <laughs> now you may be thinking, New Jersey bourbon and rye, how good could it be? James Yoakum didn't worry about awards. He cared what his customers thought. Coming from Kentucky, I'm a little bit of a bourbon snob, um, and I was always really happy. They started making the rye and the bourbon after I moved here, and so I got to try them early on in the process. And they were, they were both, you know, very nice quality, and it's, it's fun to see bourbon expanding outside of Kentucky and seeing it growing in more places, and Cooper River Distillers is one of the distilleries that was doing that. Shannon Eblen used to write about the distillery for the local newspaper. It really paved the way for, I think, a lot of other distilleries and breweries, et cetera, to open in the area. Um, and it certainly, I think, helped liven up this area of Camden. Yoakum had plenty of chances to keep the distillery alive, but potential investors wanted to move it out to the suburbs and focus on the tasting room. But like many craft distillers, Yoakum just wanted to make good whiskey. It has been a blast. I, uh, I got into this business, you know, pretty much green and didn't know anything about it and have learned a lot along the way and had a ton of fun and stuck to my guns doing things the way I wanted to, which has been fun and, uh, yeah, made, made some products that people tell me they like, which is always the best feeling. He'll spend the next few weeks winding down the business, selling off the equipment, and trying to find a new home for the barrels of whiskey that are still maturing, then start looking for a new job. For more Cask Strength Conversation on Whiskeys, with the people who make them and the people who drink them, listen to our Whiskey Cast podcast. In Camden, New Jersey, I'm Mark Gillespie.